So we just spent some time talking about properties of a clock signal, and this is going to help us figure out timing of finite state machines. So let's look at more properties of the clock. Now remember in finite state machines and in flip-flops, we're always interested in the clock edge. Now there's something called a setup time and a hold time. The setup time is the time that your input to the flip-flop or rather your excitation input, needs to be stable before the clock edge. So you need to have this amount of time where your, um, where your inputs have a stable value before the clock edge occurs. Then, in order to make sure your flip-flop works appropriately, it still needs to remain stable for T hold time after the clock edge. And this is just to guarantee that your flip-flop is going to have the correct value. If you don't satisfy the T setup and T hold times, you're not going to know what the output of your flip-flop is going to be. So this picture A is for a rising clock edge, but if you had a falling edge triggered flip-flop, then you can see here the setup comes before that falling edge and the hold time comes after the falling edge. All right, so how do we use this information to calculate uh, the timing of finite state machines. So what we're trying to figure out is the maximum clock frequency of finite state machines. So how fast can our clock go and make sure that our finite state machine still operates as it should. Okay, so remember this is a model for a more type finite state machine where we have the next state decoder logic which is combinatorial logic. And remember that all of our gates have a propagation delay. So the state registers are flip-flops. So these flip-flops are going to have setup times and hold times, and they're also going to have propagation delays because guess what? State registers or flip-flops are made out of gates, and the gates within the flip-flop also have delays. Then you have an output decoder, which also has uh, a combinatorial circuit, which also has delays. Okay, so here you can see that before the clock edge, we need to know how much time it takes to get through the next state decoder logic. So all the gates that uh, you have to get through this logic, that takes some amount of time. Then we have the T setup time, which we need before the clock edge. After the clock edge, we need the T uh, hold time and the T propagation delay of the flip-flop. So in this example though, the hold time is shorter than the propagation delay, so we can ignore the hold time. Then you see we also have this thing called T slop. And this is sort of a margin that we add in to make sure that we're not just operating at the very edge of possible operation. This adds some extra time in just to make sure that we're going to be okay with our timing. This next state is put here um, in case we were considering looking at a falling edge, but we can ignore that for right now. So basically we look at the time for the next state decoder logic, the margin time, the setup time, and the propagation delay. So let's see how this uh, looks for an example. So you can see here our minimum period is equal to all those things added up the time for the next state decoder logic, the margin time, the T-slop, the setup time for the flip-flop, and the propagation delay for the flip-flop. You come up with a time, which would be in seconds, and your maximum clock frequency is therefore 1 over that, that period, so 1 over T-min. So let's go through an example. Here we have a finite state machine. This is our next state decoder logic right here with gates. These are our state registers, our flip-flops, and our output decoder logic. So this question asks, what is the maximum system clock frequency at which the following sequential circuit can operate? For this problem, the flip-flops have a setup time of 10 nanoseconds and a propagation delay of 13 nanoseconds. Inverters have a propagation delay of 6 nanoseconds, so we see an inverter here. And logic gates, which would be AND gates and OR gates, have a propagation delay of 8 nanoseconds. For this problem, add a safety margin of 12 nanoseconds, and assume the propagation delay for the flip-flops is greater than the hold time, which means we can ignore the hold time. Assume X input is stable, 
What that means is we don't need to worry about x changing. So we don't need to worry about the delay going through this inverter because x is assumed to be stable. It's not going to change. And z1 and z2 outputs drive a circuit that is not sensitive to the maximum clock frequency. So that means no matter how long it takes for us to get z2 and z1, we don't care because they drive a circuit that doesn't depend on the maximum clock frequency. So we don't need to include these in our calculation either. Okay, so that means we're going to need the setup time, the propagation delay, the um, amount of time to get through this logic. We, don't, we can ignore the inverter because x is stable, so we need 8 nanoseconds for this AND gate and 8 nanoseconds for this OR gate, and then a safety margin of 12. So you'll see that here. We're going to have the next state decoder, which was for the AND gate and the OR gate, you look at the longest path from inputs to outputs. So the longest path is going from the um, going through two gates. So we have 8 plus 8. The T safety margin or T slop is 12. T setup time was 10. And T propagation delay for the flip flop was 13. This comes out to 51 nanoseconds. So the fastest we could clock this circuit is 1 over T min, 1 over 51 nanoseconds. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. So that becomes 19.6 megahertz. All right, so there's an example. In the next video, I will do a few more.